if your life has order, especially if you have got order, order in prayer, order in the word of God, the moment you don't read the word of God, the moment you don't pray, you'll feel that no, something's not right. My order has been disturbed. I need to go back and do what's right. Hallelujah. And so is diligence. Diligence will also teach you the same thing. Diligence teach you. Diligence is doing the same thing continuously in a way that will benefit. I'm just giving you a layman's explanation of diligence. When you didn't do what you were supposed to do on that day, because you diligently wake up and pray, you diligently study the word of God, you diligently do your spiritual things in the house, the day that you don't, you know that uh, uh, something is not right. So if you're just living your life haphazardly, like every day there is no diligence, you don't even know what time you pray. You don't have order, you don't even know what time you pray. That's why some of you do prayers on the run. Or some of you pray, pray while sleeping. God, I forgive you for everything that you have done. Because you don't even know what you are saying because you are sleeping. But lack of order and diligence. Excellence made you, make you to spot that, you know, something is amiss here. This is not my standard. I know who I am. This is not me. Why am I feeling this way? Why, why, why all of a sudden I'm neglecting the way I look? What has happened to my life? That's the spirit of excellence. So the child of God must always have order, excellence and diligence. Those, those, those are, that is your baseline. It's, it's, those are foundational matters. My twin someone. Hallelujah. So you, you don't, don't operate outside those because you won't even know whether your faith is high or low because you don't have any baseline in life. So order, excellence and diligence all helps you to measure your faith. You say, oh, why, why, why am I doubting what, what, what has been said? No, no, that's not me. That's not me. Let me, let me check my triplets. Let me check you. The order in my life? Okay. Okay, no. There is a little bit of disorder this side. I must fix. Is there diligence? No, no. I've been sleeping too much. I've even been studying the word diligently. I've even been praying diligently. So no wonder why my faith is affected. Because your faith will feed off from the standard that you have set for your life. A standardless life is a faithless life. Your faith feeds off from the standard that you have set for your life. A standardless life is a faithless life. One day you wake up, you're excited, you pray. The next day you wake up, you just go. Now one day you walk in your room, you read the Bible. Standardless. There is no order. There is no diligence. Obviously, excellence will be absent. Because these two, order and diligence, are, are give, always give birth to excellence. You cannot tell me that you have faith if you lack these three. Pastor Chris, can you get my phone there? You, can, you cannot tell me that you have faith if you lack these three. This is sub notes. This is main notes. I don't want to page. I want to <laughs> sub notes and main notes. Hallelujah. Amen. Church, say from today onwards, I will make sure that my life has order, excellence, and diligence. Okay. The, the right order is this. My life has diligence, order, and excellence. You will see, any faith that does not have 
all the excellence and diligence you are playing. You are playing. If your faith does not have this three, you don't, you don't even have a set time in your life of prayer. You are playing. You, you don't know whether you are improving or going down. So this three helps you. You know that, yeah, you know what? You know, I'm improving my life. You know, I used to pray 30 minutes. Now, now it's 45 minutes. Wow, I'm celebrating. I used to pray 45 minutes. Now it's an hour. You, you can measure the standards of your life. And when that's that, we'll see the way you, you dress up. That this man, this man or this woman respects herself. There is a standard of order. There is a standard of excellence and diligence. If I can say to the church, next week, the president is fellowshipping with us. Most of you won't dress the way you are dressed. You will look different because I said the president is coming. <laughs> okay, there is no amen. amen. Because now, now, now you feel like it's a personal attack. If you feel in that way, I rebuke that spirit. <laughs> it's a teaching, not a personal attack. If I say a dignitary is coming here, I say, guys, next week, Ekuruleni municipality, the AMC have decided that they are visiting us. Some of you will be thinking of opportunities. Now I must be presentable. Eh? No, no I'm, I'm, I, must, I must look the part. Somebody asked me at work, why do you always look like this? I said, I don't know the day of my visitation. I look sharp all the time. My colleagues will tell you, all the time, Monday to Thursday, only Friday I don't wear a suit. Because you don't know who's coming. Order will open you up to opportunities. Mm. Order will open you up to opportunities. Opportunities, or if the good friend of an opportunity is preparation. Opportunity plus preparation is breakthrough. Okay. Father, I pray for breakthrough, but you don't look like breakthrough. Let me preach. He who has an ear, <laughs> let them what? Let them hear. Amen. So, I was, as I was praying, God was telling me that, no, we need to change. We can't preach order and, and, and not look like one. It will start from here. From the altar. Amen. It will start from here. Amen. Can I tell you something before I preach? Lack of order open doors for the enemy. The day that you're supposed to pray and you didn't pray because you are orderless, it might be the day that the enemy will attack. Lack of diligence, same thing. If you pray because you've got a problem, just know that you are very late. Yes, too late. Pray before there is a problem. Amen? Amen? maintain a standard of prayer and your word life. Some of you say open the book of Revelation. You go to the book of Exodus. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Let me keep quiet. Otherwise I'll be me. <laughs> Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. God loves you. Say he's a God of order. Say like you say he's a God of order. He's a God of order. Very orderly. Can I tell you something? What exposed Satan in heaven 
was not anything else. It was the order in heaven. The moment Satan became disorderly, while he was still thinking, the order in heaven, the excellence in heaven exposed his thoughts. While he was still thinking that I'll mount or I'll be like God, uh, God said, uh, uh, there is a disorder in the spirit. And when, when, when Archangel Michael said she located it to Satan, he said, God, sit down. He said, small boy, I'll deal with him. He chased him out of heaven. So, the Bible, when, when the Bible said there was war in heaven, open the door, please. When the Bible said there was war in heaven, it is not God versus Satan. No. God has never fought Satan. Jesus Christ has never fought Satan. The Holy Spirit has never fought Satan. It was the Archangel Michael and his angels. That, that's Revelation 11 verse uh, 12, 7. It was the Archangel Michael and his angel who fought him and take him off them and, and take him from heaven. How was he exposed? The order in heaven exposed the disorder in Satan's heart. So if you don't have order, you are exposing yourself to things that are not okay. Hallelujah. Have order, look like order, you'll speak like order. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Last week we shared about uh, territory, right? The land, possessing the land through the cross. I mean, if you remember what, what we shared last week. Or oh, none of you remembers, okay. It's a sign of disorder. Don't worry, you'll have order. <laughs> Father, I thank you this morning that you are here. You are with us. You are the God who speaks. I thank you, Father, that is about to share your word. You are speaking with the tongue of the learned, the word in season to those who are weary. Speak, Heavenly Father, we are listening. Father, I bind every spirit that seeks mighty God to disturb this word and this environment. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon this environment. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ, the covenant of God, upon every soul in this place. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, have time to pray. Have time for the word. When I say have time, have a set time. Know yourself that I'm effective in this time. If you are effective 12 o'clock midnight, it's okay. If you are effective 9 o'clock, it's okay. If you are effective 4 o'clock in the morning, it's okay. But know yourself, when are you effective in prayer? When do you study the word of God and, and it, does, it comes into you? When, when, when is that time? You, you, should know your, you, you should know your time of effectiveness. Hallelujah. And that will create order in your life. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the most famous scripture. Hallelujah. I'm giving you the first key of possessing what belongs to you. Today we're not going to talk about faith. We're going to talk about the system and the manifestation of faith. Amen? Amen? The systems and the manifestation of faith. How does it work? And how do you make it manifest? Amen? Because some of you, I can ask you, what is faith? You will tell me that say, faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. We know, we know the definition. Hallelujah? But we need to know this system. We need to know what is faith. How many of you are expecting something? You want to get something someday in your life. Lift up your hands. There is something that you need in your life. You, you got an expectation, right? No, no, uh, I, I can't see your hands. How many of you have an expectation that there is something that I must get in my life? You know that God, God must deliver something to you. That is an expectation, right? 
Oh, God must do something for me. That's an expectation. I've got good news for you. It's already done. Hallelujah. It's already done. What is left is your way to possess what God has done for you already. Hallelujah. On Wednesday, Friday, we spoke about the whole counsel of God. We spoke about the whole counsel that God is eternal. Whatever that God is saying to you, he's not telling you something that he will do. He's telling you something that is already what? Done. Because God declares the end from what? From the beginning. He's eternal. He declares the end from the beginning. Whatever that he say, if go, it, I, I shared this on Friday and I'll share this today. Saturday morning, no, no, no. I shared this yesterday, ne? yesterday or last week, I can't, on Friday, I can't remember. There are medical doctors who died without a metric certificate. I, sh I shared this. When was it? Was it Friday? Yeah, they are made, uh, those who come to check diligently know when it was shared. <laughs> those who, are, who come to church diligently <laughs> know when it was shared. You know, you know, I said, say, I say, Holy Spirit, what do you mean by that? He said, no. Everything was born Everyone, Psalm 139 verse 16, we'll have to go up to that one. Psalm 139 verse 16, the Bible said that our days were fashioned before us. Before we were born, God has already scripted our lives. I told you someone, your life is scripted already. To God, you are a finished project. You might not see yourself the way God to, If, let, let, can, 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 I, can I have a little boy? Come, come, my boy. Yes, come, my boy. Plus, I miss you. Come. You were missed. We'll fight later. Yeah. Listen, most of you are looking at a little boy. Ne? But according to what God has designed for him, if he's a prophet, God is looking at a prophet. Amen. Amen. If, if it's a church financier or a multimillionaire, God is looking at a multimillionaire. Amen. You are looking at a small boy. So your view and God's view is not the same. Amen? Amen. Amen. God sees the finished product in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the reason why you, you are so hungry and eager and yearning for what you want is because it belongs to you. Amen. That house, that you feel like, no, if I can get this house, it's mine. It belongs to you. Amen. That desire is, 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 is not just coming from, uh, unless otherwise it's lust. You are just lighting or you are coveting. The, that, the, that's a different spirit. That's a different spirit. But if it's a genuine desire that I need a house for my family, and this is the house that I have in mind. My, this house for my family is like this. Believe you me, whatever picture that you have in your mind is not from you. It's from your inner man. The spirit in you who knows what God has released unto, that, unto him what belongs to him. Amen? So what you feel that, what you feel you lack you are right. You're feeling that you lack because you haven't possessed it yet. But your spirit man has it already. Not you, someone. So, you, this is your spirit man. Your spirit man, by the, by, the, by, the, by the reason of the way you feed it, your spirit man might be a little boy like this, whereas you are yearning for a prophet, a big man. You have even been eating nicely, so your spirit man is saying, I know what you want, but I cannot get what you want because what you are giving me is not yet, doesn't qualify me to get what you want me to get for you. 
Amen. So, th- th- thank you, my boy. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor, I miss you. Your spirit man has, or has, has everything that you have ever needed. What you desire, when you feel that the desire is too strong, some people, they are overtaken by their desire. They even go and try to manifest their desire through stealing, through witchcraft, through visiting Inyangas and all that. Whereas God has placed a process. And that process is embedded in your faith. Am I talking to someone? Can we start? Your, verse? Yeah, your eyes saw my substance. So, the word substance from the Greek, Greek word inogom, which means mental. Your eyes saw my mental, yet being unformed. And in your book, they were all written. That's about you. The days fashioned for me, when yet none were, when, when yet there was none of them. Meaning, these days were fashioned before they exist. Listen, the day you were born, God saw you sitting here now. Okay, that's a perfect example. The day you were born, God saw you sitting here now. The day I was born, God saw me preaching, standing here now. That's my mental. That's my substance. But you want someone? So, what you feel that your deepest desire, I'll again put a disclaimer. I'm not talking about lust and covetousness. No. I'm talking about genuine desires that are driven by the spirit of God. That desire that you need, that that car that you need, that, you know, one day I desire to transport my own children to school with my own car, driving them. It's a genuine desire. I desire to, to house my family. You see, it is not just a desire. You are feeling that way because the car is in you. The house is in you. Whatever that you need, that money that you feel like, if I can get this money, it's in you. You need to give birth to it. God has done it already for you. That's where faith comes in. Hallelujah. That's where faith comes in. And the, your faith, listen, the Bible said, they, and in your book they were all written a book is written by what words but you someone if you can open a book right now what is written in the book is what the words but you someone what is written in the book is the what the words so if they are written in the book they are written with the word what do you need to have to manifest what is written in your book? The word. Am I talking to someone? What you need to have to manifest what is written of you is what? The word. Because your faith outside the word is a wish. Your faith outside the word is what? It's a wish. And God didn't say if you wish for something, I'll do it for you. No, if you believe. And every form of belief, every belief and every faith, there must be an object of that belief. There must be the source of that belief. You, you cannot have a sourceless belief. You cannot have a sourceless faith system. Your faith must be attached to something. That's why the Bible says faith is the substance. There is something that your faith is attached to. Wishes are, wish, a wish is always attached to covetousness. A wish is always attached to lust. But faith, the object of faith, number one, is the cross. The object of the faith is the cross. 
not the cross alone, is Jesus and him what? Crucified. And who is Jesus? He's the word. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. So your faith must be based on the word of God. Who wrote your book of life? The word. Who is the word? Jesus Christ. Who is the best person to manifest what you carry in your spirit man right now? The word himself. How do you make it manifest? The way, the, the, the way sh God showed us how it's manifesting by declaring and speaking the word. This book of the, of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate upon it, what? Day and night. So you, you need to meditate upon the word of God when? Day and night. Why? I'll tell you. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just tell you a brief background of the book of Hebrews. Can you go to the book of Hebrews? Chapter 11, verse 1. The book of Hebrews were written to the, to, to, to the Jews who, who have just converted from Judaism to Christianity. So they were going through a lot of persecution. And they did not have the object of faith. Because all that they knew since they were born was Judaism. So every time when they were persecuted, their fallback position or their default mode would be what? Judaism. What they knew before they were converted to Christianity. Am I talking to someone? So it's, impo it's important that you understand the, the, this background. Because most of us just say we know the book of Hebrews. But if you don't understand the context and the setting and, of, of the book and the period and the time, what was happening behind what, what is written, your faith won't, won't, won't be where it's supposed to be. So, so the Jews, they were persecuted for being Christians. Because according to the, uh, to the other Jews who persecuted them, they were, they were fighting against the laws of Moses. So Paul has to come to them as an ethical girl, just a preceding chapter. The last verse Paul said, the just shall live by what? By faith. And the Jews begin to ask Paul, what is faith? What, how do we know that we got faith? That is the reason why we'll go to, that is why you see in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 11, Paul take them through the uh, historical background of the Jews. He speaks about Sarah. He speaks about Saul, uh, Saul who was converted to Paul. No, no. He, 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 he's speaking about all these people. Noah, he speaks about uh, also Abraham, the one who didn't die. What's what, what the name of the one who didn't die? Enoch. He speaks about Enoch, yes. You know, so he, he takes them to the historical background that you know what? You are not the first people to have faith. Even the one that your brothers are quoting had faith. But what is faith? What is, what is the system of faith? How does faith operate? The system of faith, it, the faith must first change your environmental setting on your mindset. Hallelujah. Until you change the way you are viewing your environment, you will always believe what the environment is giving you. There must be a change. The setting of, of your mindset, of the environmental setting of your mindset must be changed. Your, in other words, how you relate with the circumstances, your environment is important for your faith. So the definition of faith alone is not enough without you having the word inside of you that impacts your view towards the environment. Am I talking to someone? Are we together? So, so as much as we'll describe, we'll give the definition that faith is the substance of things to hope for. Evidence of things not seen. However, there is a nature of faith. Even though it's the substance, the nature of faith should affect your nature. Who is Norma Marigana when she's not believing? When she's not believing, she becomes a doubting Thomas. Oh, now you know your nature. 
When I'm believing, I become like Jesus Christ because I believe in the word. And who is the word? It's Jesus Christ. Therefore, what I'm believing now has nothing to do with me, has everything to do with the finished works of Calvary because I did not die for myself. Jesus died for me. So the one who wants me to believe will make it possible for, for it to happen. Why? Because he has already died for it. Am I talking to someone? So that is, that is the system of faith. When you look at your, you don't look at yourself through the eyes of defeat. Because when you look at yourself in your own nature, in your own personal nature, what you are going to see is that which is not there. Okay. Am I talking to someone? When you, listen, that's why, that's why it's important. To know faith, Bongobe. Not, not to define faith. To know faith. To have a, a deep relationship with faith. So, if you are knowing faith through Jesus Christ, what do you do? You must know the efficacy and the power of faith. The efficacy and the power of faith. How does this faith operate? It's important. If this faith work, what has powered the faith? It will take us back where? To the cross. Because the, 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 the Jews wanted someone like Moses. Okay, in Judaism, we have the Torah. That's what they were telling Paul. We had the Torah. We, this was our basis of faith. We believe in the Torah and we know our great-grandfathers has confirmed that what is written in the Torah has really happened. Really, the Red Sea was opened with people ate manna, but now if you want us to hey, just have faith without anything that you can point out to, where is the Red Sea now? Where is manna now? It's not going to work for us. Then so Paul said, no, no, no. You need to lift, you, 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 you need to look up. Look unto Jesus. You need to look unto Jesus. We don't look at the historical content. Yes, there is, the historical content is relevant because it was bring us unto the faith. Am I telling someone? It was bring us away unto, unto the faith. It's, the historical content is relevant. There's a reason that the law was our, is our teacher to bring us away into faith. I told you someone. So listen, how are you practicing your faith? You cannot practice faith without being a word practitioner. The efficacy of faith is in your relationship with the word. Do you define yourself through the situation or through what God has said about you? What is your staying power in that situation? Because when this book was written, the Jews, the Jews were being persecuted, meaning they had to have what? Staying power. They, they had what you call what? Endurance. What is your endurance to your situation? How long are you willing to hold on before God can make it manifest? What, what will be your source of endurance? What, what is it that you'll be holding on to before it manifests? It cannot just be faith hanging. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in. You partner with the Holy Spirit. Faith outside the partnership with the Holy Spirit is very dangerous. You'll partner with any familiar spirit that comes your way. Any spirit that sounds and feels relevant to what you are going through, you run with it. You partner with the Holy Spirit. John 14, 26, you know I love this scripture. He's what? He's our teacher. He's our helper. He brings everything what? Into remembrance. He's the one who will say, and besides that, he's the power behind the cross. The Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I've got faith. 
You know, say, say, neighbor, neighbor. I've got faith. So listen, the whole subject of faith is about you crediting the word to be true, number one. What is written is true. Jesus has died for us. Am I talking to someone? I believe in the word. I believe in the finished works of Calvary. If he has died, okay, let me take you back to this. What has held the Christians back then was the world in them. Like what has held the Israelites. The Israelites were out, were out of Egypt but Egypt was not out of them. Hallelujah. So even when you are just being born again, you can be out of the world and not being aware that the world is not yet out of you. What am I talking about, Pastor? But I've been born again for 10 years. Yes, you can be born again for 10 years, but your, the manifestation of things against for you, they should be measured by how the world works. In the world, before you get promoted, there should be an interview. You shall be called for an interview. Somebody must call you and must call it and, and, and pat your back. But God is saying, I can make it happen in the blink of an eye. So, just like Philip, Philip, after baptizing the Ethiopian Enoch, the Bible said he was found where? In Azotus. 30 miles away from where he baptized the day. He was taken by the Spirit and, and put in a, in a place 30 miles away. 30 miles is about 45 k's away from where, he, from where he was. So, Philip, if Philip did not have faith, it, he was, the Holy Spirit was going to struggle to uproot him from where he was. I know of a, of, 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 of a man, he was supposed to go to Israel. He did not have money. The, and the Holy Spirit said to him, go to the airport. I, I'll tell you his name if I remember. He went to the airport. He enters the bathroom of the airport. The, the airport of his native country. He entered the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. The old said, walk out. When he walked out, he was walking out from the airport in Israel. I, I know, I know, I know because you, do you know what's happening with your, bri with, with your brain now? Your brain is trying to figure out what might have happened. That's where your faith gets stalled. I told you this story on purpose. That's where your faith gets told because you want to figure out how it's going to happen. Just believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just believe in the word. Just believe that he who promised is faithful and is able to do what he has promised. Just believe. And you... He walked out from, from, from the airport. And when he's about to go back, God said, go back to the airport. And somebody just came to him. Are you so and so? Yes, okay, here's your ticket. The person that he never knew, he, he, he boarded the plane, he, he went back to, to his native country. So God can do things far beyond your imagination far beyond what you can ever think or believe. He, he, he is God. He has created heaven and earth. Nothing is impossible with God. All that you need to do, I told you, order, excellence, and diligence. Don't allow your mind to be clouded with things that does not confirm the word of God in you. Some of you, you think through daily sun. You think through daily sun and you expect to manifest the word in your life. It's not going to happen. Think through the word of God. 
And how do you think through the word of God? This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate. What, 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 what is to meditate? You shall speak it day and night. You shall, to meditate comes from the Greek word matter. You shall, you, shall, you, you shall speak it. You shall speak it day and night. Until you believe that, until that word becomes part of your system and you'll see the Holy Spirit working in you. You see, the Holy Spirit is waiting for you to be filled up with the word so that he can do what God has instructed him to do. That's the reason why Jesus Christ, when he made the disciples, he didn't say, oh, now you are my disciples. Now, come here, come here. I, I'm, I'm glad that you chose me. How many are you? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, twelve. Okay, it's okay. Holy Spirit, please come fill them up. No, it didn't, it didn't work like that. It didn't work like that. He took them for three years. He was teaching them the word. He, they were seated under the word for three years. And when they were ready for the Holy Spirit, by the reason of the word in them, he said, go ye tarry in Jerusalem. And after that, after that, I want you to the system of faith. After that, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, plus the word, because the Holy Spirit was looking for the word inside of them. We see Paul and Peter. Or oh, is Paul and Peter not going to? Yeah? Peter and John go, go, go into the temple. They, they see a, a, a lame man seated by the gate. He couldn't walk. The Bible said the man asked for arms, which is money. They look at him. They say, by the way, who are we? I, I can look, I can see that this one is expecting money. He doesn't know that we got more than money today. We're not the same, eh? Peter can see, Peter say, John, do you remember the word? Yeah, the, and John said, uh, the, the, the very same word that is happening in you is happening in me. What do you have? He said, mm, I have the word in me. They look at him and say, no, no, silver and gold we do not have. What we have, we give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the, and the men stood up and walked. They didn't say, uh, say uh, you see, Jesus Christ taught us, ne? we're not sure, but he said if we, if we can say in his name you'll walk. Uh, I'm not sure whether we'll be able to walk, ne? but just try. Just try, you know. You know, we know we, we are we are new in these things, yo. We are just new. We, we just like you remember. Maybe once, or maybe some of us will just said, No, I love the confidence. They said, What we have, what we have, we give you. You see, your situation is waiting for you to give it what you have. What what is it that you have on the inside of you? If you have doubt, you'll give your situation doubt. If you have failure, you'll give your situation failure. If you have unbelief, you'll give your situation unbelief. What do you have on the inside of you? What do you have? That's why it's important that you are diligent in the word of God. Because when a situation comes, when a situation comes, you'll stand up and say, you know what? Man? Silver and gold I might not have now. But Father, you are my source of provision. In you, I trust. In you, I believe. I'm 100% sure that God won't let his name down. He said, I have exalted my word above my name. He will never let his word down. He will do it. He did it before. He will do it for you again. He is well able to do it. I mean, you know, you know, you know I, I don't know. I looked at Moses. Moses, God loves you, but I have Jesus. Where's the Red Sea? If Moses, who did not have Jesus, who did not have God on the inside of him? You see, the way, listen, the, God chose to rest on the rod. <laughs> the rod of Moses. He said, Moses, what do you have? He said, I, they don't worry, my power is there. You are not yet cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I cannot live in you. So let me use that rod. Point that rod. Listen. You are what the rod of Moses was to Moses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and even more. You are what the rod of Moses was to him, even more. The very same rod that Moses used to point the Red Sea. You are that person because of the Christ in you. Am I talking to someone? You are that person because of the Christ in you. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. Say, look at this. Say, neighbor, I've got faith. Say, I refuse to be blinded by circumstances and situations. Say, the word will always triumph over all. Hallelujah. So, change. What is your view about yourself? How do you see you? How do you see you? How do you see you, Mr. Chilwan? Your, your, prayer should, your prayer should be say, God, let my view about myself match your view. Let me see me through your eyes. The moment, the day that you start seeing yourself through the eyes of God, nothing will be impossible to you. Nothing will be impossible to you. All that you need to do, take the first step of faith. If you are believing God for a car, I remember we are believing God for a bus, the one that you're driving. God said, are you sure that you are believing God for I said, yes. He said, it's fine. Clean the garage. We had only one car. I took out the things from the garage. I took them out. I was left with two heaters like those ones that by the corner, but they were old. And, and, and God said, no, take those heaters to give them away because the car that is coming is big. So faith needs preparation. Prepare as you believe. Just like a, a mother who is expecting. Nobody tells the mother who is expecting that we will give birth to a child who is alive. But because of faith, I want to tell you the basis of faith, they will, go, they, they will, they will paint a room. Paint a room. Buy a court bed. Buy clothes. The, the child is still here, but the clothes are there. That's faith. I'm going to turn to someone. I want you to you had faith before. The child is where? It's here, but the clothes are what? Are there. You are manifesting the clothes. You are saying, the one who will wear this clothes is coming. Because I know what I'm carrying. The same applies to faith. When you know the word that you are carrying, you'll start preparing for that which you are preparing for God to do for you. Am I turning to someone? Is that the same like pregnancy. If you know what you are carrying, you will start preparing. Go prepare. Go prepare. What is that you are believing God for? Go prepare. The Bible said, if you can go to uh, Hebrews 11. Want. It speaks about Noah. I, 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 I'm looking at uh, 11.7. Eh? Hey. I'm not sure whether it's Google or it's your knowledge for the word, but because I love you so much, I'll just say you are rooted in the word. You know what you are doing. <laughs> you are rooted in the word. You know what you are doing. Can you put it there? By faith, Noah being no, Enoch. Okay, no, leave, let, 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 let leave it there at, at Noah. By faith, Noah being divinely warned of things yet, not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark, preparedness. He was warned of things not seen, yet he moved. And when Noah is preparing the ark, if you have read it, they were laughing at him because nobody has seen the rain before. It has never rained that time. For those who don't know your Bible, let, let, let me educate you. It has never rained. The trees and every grass was fed from. It used to come from below. Ne? So when Noah said, God said it will rain. What is rain? Water will fall from the sky. There is are even worse. You are mad. Yeah, you are just mad. Water falling from the sky. You are mad. You have gone berserk. 
Noah, the only thing that saved Noah is that there was no mental institution then. If there was a mental institution then, they were going to carry him and get him arrested there. They say, oh, 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 how could that? But Noah, Noah, even when they were laughing, he was preparing. Even though it did not make sense, he was preparing. How did he prepare? He kept on listening to God. He was receiving instruction. Noah did not get a, a, full, a full plan. No. By the reason of him continuously working on what he has heard from God, God downloaded more plans to him. After he finished the first phase, Noah has to do, and he was given the, the second phase. After he finished the second phase, he was given the third phase. By a continuously acting on the word of God, God was giving more instruction. Am I talking to someone? So what do you do? You, you work on the word of God. As you continuously move on the word, you receive what? More instruction. More revelation. Hallelujah. Am I, am I, am I talking to someone? No, I can't hear your amen. amen. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, the first move of faith it's important. It will release the next manifestation by God. Amen. Don't just say good faith without movement. You know, I'm looking for a job. You are waking up 11 o'clock. Not because you wanted to wake up. Because your blankets are too hot. It's too hot outside. When I was still a call center agent, I prayed to be an ops manager. I was still a call center agent. I prayed to be an ops manager. After praying, I believe God so much that I'll be an operational manager. I, in a call center agent, you, you don't have to wear a suit because you don't see a taxpayer physically. You dress anyhow because you talk, you talk to them. I started wearing my, my, my suit and tie. I went to work wearing my suit and tie. Three months down the line, I was called for an interview to this Salsian office, to the Asas office, Alberton. I was called for an interview. I remember it was the 4th of June. I started my new job, 2000 and, 2003. I started my new job. I was an ops manager for prosecution. I, did, I, I didn't become, I dressed the, the way. So listen, walk like you got it. Amen. Behave like you got it. Amen. Speak like you got it. Amen. Sing like you got it. Amen. Praise God like you got it. Amen. Am I talking to someone? Well, that, that's faith. Amen. When doubt comes, Go back for the word. The only antidote for doubt is the word. Hallelujah. He said, five or uh, eleven four. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts. Through though if he be dead, he still speaks. By faith, everything Abel offered through faith. His faith makes his blood to speak. Oh, you don't know what faith can do. It's written there that through it, he being dead still speaks. Faith can resurrect dead things and make them to speak unto you. What do you want? God has it for you. God has it for you. Live by faith. If you need to sow a seed, sow it by faith. If you need to give, listen, people who don't give is because they don't have faith. People who don't sow. I grew up in a farm. My grandparents were farmers. By the time when it's, it's time for them to till the land. Before it even rained, 
they will say, what's my, it's October, we are tilling the land. By the time the first rain of October comes, September, October comes, we are sowing. Why did they till the land before it rains? Faith. Had they waited for it to rain till the land, it will be too late for them to sow. So we always have the first crop and sell for those who don't have. So there are some, there are those who are buying from those who got faith. Because faith by itself is a currency. It can get you what you don't have. My turn to someone, listen, family, God loves you. Jesus Christ did not die for nothing on the cross. He died so that you can have life and have it more in abundance. Have faith in him. You can all stand up. Have faith in him. The cross was not in vain. Reach out through the word of God. Have your own system of faith. Know what to do. Pray. Lift up your hands. I surrender to you. Everything I give to you. With hope, surrender your doubts. Don't behold anything. I surrender all to you. Bible said, Hebrews verse 11, 5, by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God has taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony, check the testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Listen. Diligently seek him. Diligence affects your faith. I'm talking about the system of faith now. Diligence. Deal, when you diligently seek him, it means that you put time aside. So this time is my time with God. God, I want to see you. God, I want to hear from you. God, I want to feel you. Speak to me. Put time aside. Put time aside. 
diligence. Put time aside. The time that most of you use complaining. The time that you use complaining. The time that you use murmuring. The time that you use bickering and all that is the time that can be given to God. And that's where your faith is. He said, because he is the rewarder of those who diligently gently seek him. Diligence in prayer. Diligence in the word. Diligence in worship. I want you to look at this. I, I was once an expert warrior. As expert warrior, it means that nobody could worry like me. I was an expert in worrying. I can even wake up 2 o'clock in the morning and start worrying until I go to work. And by the time I get to work, I'm too tired. I'm too tired. I've got no results for my waking up. I mean, imagine being, two, being up 2 o'clock. You are bathing. You are, you are in the office. You are too tired but you've got nothing to show for. I said, no, that's not going to be my life. When I wake up, when worry wants to come, that's when I came up with these prayer points. When worry wants to come, if I know that my spirit man can't pray, I'll go to my prayer points. I'll pray them. I'll pray my prayers reading. And by the time I continue praying, my spirit man will engage. I'll find myself praying tongues. I'll pray in tongues. Instead of me waking up until, until whenever, four o'clock I'll be sleeping. Six o'clock I wake up, I'm fresh. And I know that I've benefited. I've spent time with God. I've been praying. I told him what I needed. I quoted his word. And now, instead of me waking up because I'm worried, I set an alarm. Two o'clock I'm waking up to pray. So I overtook worry. I became intentional. I set an alarm. I said, 12 o'clock, I'm waking up to pray. By the time when I'm done praying, I started seeing results of what I was looking for. Because I have replaced diligently worrying by diligently seeking him. My twin someone. And I realized that, oh, my head is filled with a lot of things. Whenever I think, I don't think. I said, no. I bought the earpiece. When I sleep, I don't say you do it. You can put the phone in yourself, whatever way. I, my, one of my daughters says she's doing it. Lirato. Before, I, will, I won't fall asleep until I listen to the word of God. I'll play the word of God, listen to the word of God. I'll just find myself dozed off. Then, then my mind is conditioned to believe in God. So you are expecting God to do things for you. You don't even spend a single minute with him. You spend a single, every time with the same. Whenever you, the time that you spend worrying, you are listening to the sermon of the greatest preacher of evil, Satan. That's worry. Worry is the sermon of the greatest preacher of evil, Satan. Okay, I'll repeat it. Worry is the sermon of the greatest preacher of evil, Satan. When you meditate on the word, you are diligently seeking, seeking him. God is not a magician. There are, there are systems and processes of faith. Word, prayer, and belief. If you only believe, all things are what? Are possible. Make time for prayer. Did you hear me? Make time for the word. Condition your system through the word. When I look at everyone who is homeless, there is one thing that I'm 100% sure of that when, when they came here on earth, God had a purpose for their lives. There is no person who is useless in the sight of God. 
There is only one person that the Bible said, this one is the son of perdition, Judas. Only one in the whole, only one, that one. Any other person, God has a plan for your life. God loves you. God wants to see you prosper. God wants to see you joyful. God wants to see you increasing. God wants to see you manifesting that which he has called you to manifest. He loves you. Go for the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your hands and begin to pray. Say, Father, strengthen me with might by your spirit in my inner man to study your word, to, to spend time in prayer. Open your mouth. Pray, pray, pray. Pray for the strength. Pray for the grace of prayer. Pray for the grace of prayer. Pray, pray for the grace of prayer. Instead of worrying, spend time in prayer. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in prayer. He who promised is faithful. He who promised is faithful. He who promised is faithful. He is God, Lord Almighty. Talk to him, talk to him. When you get home, be diligent in, in the word. Be diligent in the word. Make time for the word. Spend at least an hour in the word and an hour in prayer if you can. If you can, if, if, if you can pray an hour, go to our WhatsApp group. There are a lot of prayers there. Pray them. With all the nothing, with all, ask him, ask him, ask for the strength. By faith, Sarah herself also conceived, also received strength to conceive, to conceive a seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age. It's never too late with God. It's never too late with God. Sarah bore the child because she judged him faithful. He who has promised. She judged him faithful. Past the age, Sarah bore the child. Amen. 